and welcome to episode 3 in my How To series. You will have seen from previous episodes how I convert parts into metal using cold cure silicon rubber moulds. I use this method to make robust metal masters capable of withstanding the vulcanisation process. After a lot of filing, filling, sanding, scribing and polishing, the metal masters are finally ready for moulding. These are the completed metal masters for the Messerschmitt BF109K4 in 1 to 48 scale. The green areas are details added with milliput epoxy putty. The blue part of the main undercarriage is 3D printed in a resin specifically engineered for vulcanisation. The parts are test assembled one last time to check everything is square and dimensionally accurate. The parts have to be carefully reworked to fit together as well as possible, as any defects will be translated to all the production castings. The moulds I'll be making in this video are for centrifugal casting and require a fair bit of equipment to both make and cast from, but I hope you enjoy seeing how it's done. Vulcanisation is a process of hardening rubber using heat and pressure. Today I'll be vulcanising at 150 degrees C and 3000 psi. Anything that can't take this heat or pressure will be destroyed. And this monster is the mould press. It weighs an absolute tonne. The temperature control unit at the top controls two heated platens, between which the mould can which contains the mould is placed, and then jacked up to the correct pressure. This is a typical 12 inch diameter mould, and in this case it's for a 1 to 48 scale Spitfire Mark 1. Once in the casting machine, the mould is spun, a molten pewter is poured in through the centre. The metal then flows out through centrifugal force, along channels cut into the mould by hand. As the metal flows in, air is vented out through smaller channels. This is the same principle as for the cold cure silicon moulds. I make a smaller 9 inch mould for the rest of the Spitfire parts in exactly the same way. The unvulcanised blank discs of rubber come pre-stamped to size, with a removable core plug in the centre and a protective film. This is the mould can we're going to use to make a 9 inch diameter mould of the BF109 K4 parts. The can is made of machine steel and is very heavy. It consists of a base plate onto which an outer ring is fitted. The hole in the centre is for a core plug which forms the basin into which the molten pewter is poured. To compensate for different mould thicknesses, aluminium spacer plates can be added. Finally, a heavy top plate is added to close the mould can. Now, let's make a mould. First I begin by removing the core plug from one half of the mould, stripping off the protective film and preheating the rubber to 100 degrees centigrade. To start assembling the mould, I need a paintbrush, some talc, some locating studs and of course the metal masters I want to mould. The mould can has been preheated to 150 degrees centigrade and is now heavy and hot. The first thing to do is talc the mould can. This will make it easier to get the mould out when it's cured. The first half of the mould is now talced and placed carefully into the mould can. With the core plug added, I begin inserting the locators around the perimeter of the mould. These are just pushed into the surface. I normally use about 16 for a 9 inch mould and about 24 on a 12 inch mould. With the locators in place, I now begin adding the masters, carefully spacing them out around the mould. Sometimes I do have to get a bit creative squeezing all the parts in, as I really don't want to have to make another mould and therefore cast another mould when it comes to making a model. Once I'm happy with their position, I push them into the rubber so they don't shift position during the rest of the process. 
Bear in mind that both the mould can and the rubber are still very hot. Now I can talc and add the other half of the mould. This layer is firmed down into place again, to prevent any of the masters shifting. With the final dusting of talc, the mould is ready to go into the mould press. The mould can is now carefully placed centrally between the platens. The aluminium spacer discs are then inserted before the lid of the can is finally added. The jack is then pumped up to the correct pressure, which in this case is 3000 psi. I often release the pressure and build it up again, to allow any trapped air to escape. Now I just have to wait for the temperature to build back up, and then allow a further hour for the mould to vulcanise. While the 9 inch mould is cooking, I'll show you how to make a 12 inch mould. This will be for the BF109 K4 fuselage, wing and other parts. You can see that the rubber discs aren't thick enough for the fuselage, so I'll have to make a deeper mould. Fortunately, there is a way. The rubber discs are made from laminations. These can be separated from a blank disc and added to our discs to thicken the mould. I use lighter fluid and a spatula to separate the rubber. It's a messy job, as the solvent significantly softens the rubber. Here I've split the disc in half, and added it to one of the original discs. It doesn't matter that the two halves are of unequal thickness, it'll cast fine. With the rubber and the mould can for the 12 inch mould preheated, I can begin assembly. I follow the same procedure as for the 9 inch mould, but this time everything is much heavier, and just as hot. Now it's time to take the 9 inch mould out, and put the 12 inch mould in. It's exactly the same cooking procedure as before, but I'll give it another half hour, as the mould is now thicker. Ok, let's crack open the 9 inch mould and see what we've got. I have to work quickly, as I need the mould to be hot for cutting, as cold rubber dulls the blade. First of all, I remove the lid. I screw in bolts to pry the lid up, as it's often hard to remove. Then I use metal spatulas, to progressively lever the mould out.
With the mould out, I can split it open and take out the core plug and masters. Everything is still very hot, but the rubber has taken the impression of the masters well. I start by trimming away the excess rubber from the outer edge of the mould with a fresh scalpel blade. Then I fit the two halves together again and cut a registration mark across the edge. This makes it much easier when it comes to reassembling the moulds. Before cutting the moulds, I mark out where I'm going to cut the rubber with a biro. From now on, the cutting process is exactly the same as for the cold cure moulds. Feeds are cut into the parts leading back to the centre of the mould, and small air vents are cut leading to the perimeter of the mould. Where detail is deep within the mould, I drill straight through the mould to release the air. And here are the two finished moulds for the BF109K4. You can clearly see all the locators, the feed channels cut into the surface of the rubber from the centre of the mould, and the air vents leading out to the perimeter. The parts mould turned out a bit more cosy, but I managed to squeeze everything on. Again, the feeds run from the centre, and the air vents run to the perimeter. In the next how-to video, I'll show you how these moulds cast, and some of the pitfalls along the way. I hope you found this episode of my how-to series interesting. If you did, hit the like button, and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see the next episode in this series, and follow other projects I'm working on. If you have any questions about issues raised in this series, just leave them in the comments, and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.